If you struggle in the middle game, try to create wedge pawns. What about the wedge pawns? Well, in the position up here, we can see that the king is cast on the black king is cast on there are three pawns defending the king and white could create some attack towards the king but how to do that yeah there is some possibility to move rook g7 but probably black will follow up with rook g7 and block it there is another opportunity to look towards the king and maybe try to create a threat there and since there are no pieces which are defending except of the pawns it will be quite easy to do I always suggest to at least keep the knight or a bishop on the king's side so it would defend the king. Now it would be really helpful to have the knight on g6 or the knight on f5 which can defend g7 very nicely. Well, we can actually see that g7 is quite weak. It's attacked by the queen and it's defended by the king. Actually, it can get in trouble quite easily right now. So we could just use the bishop and focus on that pawn. After bishop to f6, it's actually going to be a checkmate in 6. It's amazing how from the middle game position, which might seem completely equal, and actually white could get in trouble by like a takes b2 and like black could promote a pawn, actually white finds a way to win. So after bishop to f6, again, we attack this pawn on g7, but like a couple of lines black could do, a couple of moves, but after g takes f6, white continues with e takes f6, creating a thread of queen to g7. Now, the only way to stop it is to move rook to g8, where the rook is actually defending the g7 square. But actually, could it help or not? Like, we're gonna see. Like, we always look for the distraction. So whenever you see, like, you create a thread and somebody is defending against that thread, you always need to find a way to distract that piece. Currently, this rook is occupied with defending g7, I need to look for the way to distract the rook. And here we have our battery with a rook on d6 and rook on d1. So we could use one of the rooks moving all the way to the top, to d8. And it might seem at first that it is hanging, but is it actually hanging? No, not really, because after rook d8, if rook would capture on d8, then the rook takes on d8. And now this rook on d8 is actually in real trouble. So if rook takes d8, we're going to deliver a checkmate this um, on g7 again our wedge pawn on f6 is really helpful because it's defending yeah again our wedge pawn on f6 is really helpful because it's defending the queen on g7 and there is no way to run away for the king it can capture the queen because it's defended and what if black would try to ignore it what if black moves to c4 then white could just take on g8 and check me and what if uh, queen to g2? Well, if queen to g2, white would just continue. Queen takes g2, and again, black rook can take this queen all the way on g2 because rook is spinning. And again, after the next move, it's going to be a checkmate. So rook to d8, it's checkmate on g7. Again, this one is extremely helpful. And black will continue with any other like random move, bishop d5. Then rook takes g8 would be a checkmate. Now, the next example up here, we can see that the pawn is on h6. It's really helping us to control the square on g7. That's our wedge pawn. And we hopefully can get our queen all the way to g7 and checkmate. But we have to be very careful because black is about to deliver a checkmate on c2. So we always should try to go through the forcing moves, such as checks and captures. Well, if in this position we do rook h7, then just the knight takes on h7. And we won't be able to del deliver any mate. Because after rook g8, rook will take on g8 and black will be quite safe. Same story about rook g8. Because of rook g8, rook takes g8, rook takes g8. After rook to g8, there is no checkmate on g7. Even though we do have this wedge pawn on h6. Because then the rook will take it back. Now, so what's the best move? The best idea here is to clear the g file. So our queen will finally be able to get to g7. And the best move in this position is rook to c5. Where rook attacks the queen on c4. And at the same time, it defends the knight on c2. So even if queen takes c2, it's just rook takes c2, and like it's going to be a win for white. Now, if let's say black would decide to move for knight e8, best move is just to get the queen on c4. And again, if they get the rook here, it's going to be a checkmate thanks to our wedge point. And if black would decide to move for any other move like knight h5, let's say, then again we go for the queen, and after rook takes just like upper queen in this position and let's say after queen g5 we try to get rid of this knight and if eventually knight will just run away to f6 
White will end up with Rook takes H7, King takes H7, and Queen G7 checkmate. Very nice wedge checkmate up here. The final example up here we can see. So the pawn is on F5, is ready to get advanced and attack this pawn on G7. Again, I always suggest keep at least one piece next to your king side. At least one. Even if your castle, if you, even if your king is extremely safe, keep at least one, either the bishop or a knight, which can defend somehow your f7 or the other square like g7 up here or the knight on f6 would be extremely helpful it could block the pawn and stop lots of wedge checkmates so in this position of course white advances the pawn to f6 where it's attacking the pawn on g7 black pawn is completely pinned queen is spinning all the way up here so it can capture on f6 it can only advance to g6 but after g6 guess what checkmate is coming so after queen to h6 there is no way to stop queen g7 there is no other pieces which can get to f8 and stop right now the only way for black to continue is to check on g2 king takes and like give a couple of more checks but after finally look up to king takes up to f2 here queen g7 is non-stoppable queen g7 is not stoppable up here so it's just winning here